it is all within us. Before you realize that or how soon you realize that will lead to either transformation or frustration. It may be just momentary for a whole lot of people because people will feel terrified. You will see they were struggling in pain, this, that was happening. A few are bewildered, what's happening? Because they never thought this will happen to them. Okay, Sadhguru, I'm going to ask you to move to this poem called Human sure. on page 112. Oh, I like that number. Mm -hmm. One, one, two, human. Human, even when at home, I longed for home, searing pain of longing for home, strangely got cured in being homeless. When the walls of home dissolved, a pristine home, unwalled and unfettered, devoid of love, affection, or companions blossomed, shall I call it my being? But this is a poem about home and it is also a poem about... It's a poem about a kind of homesickness and then it's a poem about a kind of homelessness and then it's a poem about homecoming. And. I wanted you to tell us more about that journey because I think in some way many of us have shared that journey but not on the level of, not on the profundity that you're talking about it here but I think many of us have had glimpses of that journey. Is this the blueprint for almost every seeker? See, I would say uh, there's literally no human being who is not confronted with a thought and an emotion like that but they manage to brush it aside. It doesn't bother them enough. The pain of not knowing doesn't tear them, that's the whole problem. They come to terms with ignorance, they make a deal with ignorance. They will build relationships where everybody will confirm this is the best way to live. Of comfort, companionship, love, affection, these are all things you're seeking. I know a whole lot of people have raised human emotions to heavens. If you say love, they say divine love. If you say joy, they say divine joy. If you say bliss, they say divine bliss. <laughs> you don't need any God's help to be joyful, loving, peaceful. As a human being, you endowed with these qualities. So all those who deprived themselves of that, they either seek God, or they settle for a dog. Yeah, usually. Uh, because they want a unconditional love, this is a demand. <laughs> because the nature of love is such that it's like a flower, if you don't watch it for two minutes, it'll fall. It'll wither and fall right there. Either you want to let it fall or you have to nourish it every moment or you have to concretize it. That means you take a picture and keep it on your phone screen or you institutionalize it with marriage or this or that. So essentially, well, I'm… I'm not against any institution because institutions are needed in the world to operate, otherwise there will be chaos. That is a different thing, but you cannot institutionalize joy or peace like right now we think United Nations is uh, the institution for peace. No, no, you cannot institutionalize peace. You cannot institutionalize joy. You cannot institutionalize love or anything for that matter. Institutions are functional instruments in a given society. I have utmost respect for them because without it, people, a whole lot of people wouldn't know how to live. You need institutions, there is a government, there is a democratic process, there are a variety of things, all right, there are courts, there are parliaments. Well, uh, ninety percent of the time some nonsense may be happening there, 
but still these institutions are important because without that there will be total chaos. So I'm not talking against institutions, but institutionalizing things that happen within a human being is a silly effort. But is it possible to embark on a journey without this sense of homeless, homesickness? See, uh, let one human being honestly say, when you are with your most loving parents, however doting and wonderful they were to you, that you never felt this is not where you want to be. That is a dishonest human being. Because love gets tedious, somebody's fondness gets very tedious, Comfort gets tedious because the nature of life is it wants to constantly expand. If there is no room for expansion, it doesn't matter, you are kept in a uh, whatever. I won't use because everybody uses the word golden palace. I think golden palace is totally anesthetic in my uh <laughs> my visual perception. I hate golden palace, but whatever is the most wonderful palace, or as you say, Shangri-La, whatever, you will… it'll get tedious. All the heaven-bound people, they don't know how bored they will be within three days in that place of goodness. <laughs> so I'm saying it doesn't matter, it's not because there's something wrong with your parents. They may be most wonderful people, but the very nature of a human being is such, only if you are a pet animal, if you have reduced yourself to that, you are just happy with the meals that you are getting and somebody is fondling you once in a way and you are happy with that. For that you must be a pet animal, you should not be born as a human being. Once you are born as a human being, it is natural wanting to break barriers. So when you are young as a child or a teenager, you think barriers means they are all physical. Before you understand, the barriers are not really physical. Whether you build your own house or you live in your f parents' house or you live uh, in a slave master's house, the house and walls are not the barrier. It is all within us. Before you realize that or how soon you realize that will lead to either transformation or frustration. And this home homelessness, these year, this whole phase of vagabondage, of being a nomad, you have poems about being a nomad. Is that also an intrinsic part of every seeker's journey? See, do not separate seekers and non-seekers. Everybody is a seeker. Some quickly compromise, some endure. There is nobody who is not a seeker. Some seek and forage within their own limitations, some want to seek, some seek in a safe manner, some seek dangerously. But there is nobody who is not a seeker, everybody is a seeker. And therefore this period of homelessness or vagabondage is universal? It may not be a period for everybody, it may be just momentary for a whole lot of people because people will feel terrified when they feel if they just look at it and see actually you know, just the nature of life, forget about your home. Suppose you left somewhere, you know, I've seen people, uh, you know, when we were children, when we were growing up, Mysore has a Dasara exhibition which goes on for one and a half months. So this is a place where all the youth will go and hang out and you know, there are things to eat and a lot of entertainment, shows going on, music going on, various kind of uh, circus elements and all things going on. In this… <laughs> in this exhibition grounds, which is hardly maybe ten, fifteen acres, maybe twenty acres of land and full of lights everywhere and shops and stuff's going on. Every day, either children or women or some men, they get lost from their families in that crowd. Maybe fifty thousand to hundred thousand people will be milling around and uh, people get lost. 
All the time when the music show is happening, one policeman will announce, there is a child here by name Vikram, his father's name is uh, this thing, <laughs> his mother's name is this thing, he is crying here, come immediately. Hey, God damn it, we came to listen to music. <laughs> if you brought a child, <laughs> figure out how to hold on to you. If you don't figure that out, ask him to come and go wait at the gate and pick him up there. Nothing is going to happen, all right? These are not times where great amount of kidnappings happening, anything in Mysore, nobody kidnaps you in Mysore. At least nobody kidnapped me <laughs> So, this ridiculous thing, and grown-up women, they're lost from their husband or their family. Bah! Crying in the middle of the road, bah! bah. It's a well-lit place, the whole damn place is over-lit, all right? There were no phones, that was the only thing. All you have to do is go near the gate and wait or if you're a car or a motorcycle, go and wait there or just stand there. Let's see if your man wants to find you or not <laughs> I'm saying they will be… Even men, I have seen grown-up men crying loudly because their wife or their child had gone somewhere. Unbelievable. So the sense of being lost, nothing, you don't have to drop them in the middle of Kalahari or something. <laughs> in Mysore, Dasara exhibition <laughs> I know Mysore people will be listening and say, how can Sadhguru speak like this? Does he know the pain of getting lost in Dasara exhibition <laughs> I'm saying this is how people are. I've seen people in the jungles when some of my friends came with me, in the forest, not even deep inside, just in the borders of the forest. Somewhere they go here, there and they get lost. They're just… just few meters away somewhere and they can't see us. Bah! They start crying. <laughs> Grown-up boys <laughs> I've been lost in the forest for days and weeks. Don't know where the hell I'm going. I know if I keep walking some road, something will come because I know how wide Western Ghats are. At the most, hundred and fifty, two hundred kilometers if I walk, I will come to the coast or to some city. <laughs> but in the meantime, you should see how people behave because for them, nothing big needs to happen. Smallest things, if they lose their wallet, psst, they lose their phone, gone. Everything is gone. All right? So they don't have to lose their life. This is why I said, when… Uh, when a time comes when you're going to lose your body and everything that you know as life, either terror will come when they first realize that, but slowly as life starts ebbing, it gives you a certain anesthetic. This is the nature of life because life doesn't just pop out like this. It is leaving slowly. As it starts leaving slowly, you will see there is a kind of an anesthetic, there's a kind of comfort that they come to. You will see they were struggling in pain, this, that was happening. But as death is slowly coming, approaching, last few days you see they become peaceful, nice, some of them even joyful. A few are bewildered what's happening because they never thought this will happen to them. So being lost is not about a certain situation, it is the nature of life. It is the nature of life. You have been given the intelligence to find out what is the nature of life. If you did not have the intelligence, if you were like any other creature, none of them have those problems. They are never lost, they are all fine. Physically, they may be lost in the terrain sometimes, but otherwise they are just fine. They never feel lost. This is the greatest privilege that human being has, you can be lost. Just believe me, if you cannot be lost, obviously you are chained, isn't it? You are chained? Of course. See, these days I've seen, uh, especially in the United States, people are taking their children with a… what do you call this? Um, On a leash? A leash, like a dog leash. They can pull it, there is a thing where you can shorten the leash or lengthen the leash according to the traffic and whatever else is happening. A child is running, it's on a leash. Maybe for single mothers it's a convenient way of handling, I can understand, there are no two, three people to run after the child. 
the mother doesn't have the energy of the child because he runs all over the place. Maybe it's a practical solution, I'm not commenting about that. But one who is on the leash or a chain cannot be lost, isn't it? You need to understand, being lost is a great privilege because you are not on a chain. 